What tower? Uh, up at the top of our paper, we're going to write inclines because that's what we're learning about. Make sure you have a sheet of paper out. I don't know why I wrote incline so goofy looking, but I did. We're going to draw a box on an incline. An incline is basically a ramp that's shaped like a triangle. So as usual, when we got triangles, we got to use some sine and cosine. So we'll get to that part in a minute. First, let's start with what we already know, what we have been doing consistently, which is on our free body diagram. We know gravity is going to pull this box straight down, FG. And we know there is a normal force pushing it perpendicular to this contact surface, which is up in this direction. That is our normal force. If there's friction, which way does it go? It's going to go opposite. So if it wants to go down the ramp, there'd be some friction going up. There may or may not be friction in this example. I'm just going to go ahead and list it there. That's what our free body diagram looks like. Now, the issue we have is if I ask you, is this accelerating in the x direction? Is it going to accelerate left or right at all? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it'd be going left. Would it be accelerating up or down? Yeah. Down. It'd be yeah. accelerating yeah. left and down. We can't do two accelerations at the same time. We're not equipped to deal with that. So we got to find a better way. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to kind of turn this. And instead of x being left and right and y being up and down, if I turn this, think of this as my x and this is my y. What I mean by that is if we make y how far it is above or below the surface, does it ever come off the surface of the ramp? No, it always slides across. So there'll be no acceleration there. And then all your acceleration will be in the x direction down the ramp. So that's what we're doing. We're going to kind of shift our scale. So if we're thinking about it right now, Fn is already in this y direction. Ff is already in this x direction. We just have to make Fg go in the x direction and the y direction. So to do that, we're going to split it into two pieces. So instead of it going down this way, we're going to say, well, it's made of a piece that goes this way and a piece that goes this way. These two added together get me this same thing here. Okay. So to make it look a little different, if I zoom in on it, if I just look at FG, you can think of it like this. FG goes straight down, but we can turn it into two pieces. We can turn it to a piece that is perpendicular and a piece that is parallel to the ramp. So we go down and we go this way. This is a triangle. This is a triangle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the other teacher calls it X and Y. What I prefer to think of it as is FG perpendicular and FG parallel. As in parallel to the ramp and perpendicular. I think that's a little more clear. Um, so this direction I would call parallel in this direction I would call perpendicular and then we don't have to get confused with x and y meaning something different okay if we're on a ramp we'll just put everything in parallel and perpendicular directions they're at 90 degrees these things will be at 90 degrees it should make sense okay so when I write it like that I need to know how much this or what the size of this one is and what the size of this one is compared to this fg well, we've got a triangle, right? And we know an angle on a ramp, which means what are we probably going to use? What functions? Uh, sine and cosine. Okay? There could be tangent, but we're going to go with sine and cosine. Here's what I want everybody to do. We used the calculators the other day. Let's kind of build off of this. Let me give you some example data here. On your calculator, let's go second y equals. Make sure your plot 1 is on just like yesterday. If you haven't messed, if you haven't messed with it since then, don't worry about this, but double check. So it should be on, x1, y1, you can quit. Go to mode, go up. Make sure your stat wizards and stat diagnostics are both turned off. Again, you go to mode, tap up, and make sure stat wizards, stat diagnostics are on. So hopefully this works for everybody when we do our data. Okay, We're going to go to now stat, and then edit. So stat, and press enter on edit. And what I want you to type in are these numbers here, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. These are going to be our angles, our degrees. And we're going to make a plot with this. So we're going to go to on L1, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. 
that was stat and then enter. Good so far? Again, stat, enter, make it 15, 30, 45, 60, 75 here. Then you're going to go up on this top side once you've typed those in where it says L2. We're going to press enter and we're going to clear it out. And just what I want to check is, well, does cosine or sine, is that going to give us what we want? So what I'm going to do is say cosine second L1. I want to take cosine of all these numbers here. And when I press enter, it's going to change all those for me. Those are the numbers you should get. If you're not getting them, go to mode. Make sure you are in degrees because that's probably why. Yep. Uh, it's second and then the one button. Yeah, second one. So up at L2, you clear it out. Cosine of L1. You press enter. It should give you these numbers. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, if we zoom nine it, what is happening? As angle gets bigger, what happens to our cosine value we're getting back? It gets bigger. Smaller. smaller. It's got a negative slope, right? That's the trend I want to see. When you increase the ramp, so if we increase this hill, is this block going to go faster or slower down it? Faster. Faster. So this parallel direction, what I would call FG parallel, we know it's got to use the trig function that gets bigger with angle. That being said, FG perpendicular, the part that holds it against it, this one should get smaller with angle. So what I see is this one's going to be cosine because this has got a negative slope here. So to get this, it's literally just mg cosine theta. Okay. So fg perpendicular, the portion, like how hard the surface is holding it up, that's mg cosine theta. Smaller angle? What's a beta? Theta. What's that? Angle. That's a zero with a slash across it. It just is your angle or your degrees. Okay. We're going to go back to stat where you did L2. All we're doing now this time is instead of doing cosine, we're going to do sine of L1. That should change your numbers. They should pretty much flip backwards from what it was before. When you zoom nine at this time, we get a positive slope, meaning as the angle gets bigger, what number we're getting back from sine gets bigger. Okay. Yeah. This is reflective of the parallel portion, the portion that is pulling it down the ramp. Because we know as we increase angle, stuff should slide down hills faster. Okay, So all this is Fg perpendicular is Mg sine theta. Okay. Just showing you it with the calculators and the way the, slop, the slopes work. We know it's a triangle, so we know it's going to use sine or cosine. And we just wanted the graph to match up with what made sense. Angle gets bigger, sine gets bigger. That's going this way. Angle gets bigger, cosine gets smaller, that matches up with the perpendicular direction. So that's your reasoning there. Okay. So where do we go with this from here? When you do your free body diagram, here's what it'll look like now. Okay, so if we do a free body diagram for this same thing, we're gonna have Fn goes up to the right or up to the left, Fn. Friction goes up to the right, Ff. Okay, I'm not putting K or S because it depends on the scenario. We've got a portion of gravity that pulls it down the ramp called Mg sine theta. I do Mg because it's M times G instead of putting Fg, which is the same thing, but this is just easier for the blind. Here we go. Yep. And Mg cosine theta is here. So what does this actually mean on problems? Well, we're just going to write our net force equations. Let's go through an example if there is no friction. So no friction acting on a block that's just sitting on a table. I want to write my net force equation for the parallel direction, which is parallel to the ramp, the portion that's going down the ramp. What is my force that pulls it down the ramp? gravity and it's the sine. So we put mg sine theta. If there's no friction, is there anything opposing it? No, so we don't have to subtract anything. We just set that equal to m times a. Now what do you notice? Both sides have 
m. So the m's cancel. And you are left with the acceleration down a ramp is equal to g sine theta if there's no friction and no other forces. Does m show up in this equation? No. no. So does mass affect how fast something slides down a ramp? No. no. Does that make sense? Yes, because everything falls at the same rate. Everything way. falls at the same rate anyway. Uh, these two are pretty similar masses, but I could, I'm could i not going to drop my calculator. But any two things I drop that don't have air resistance will fall at the same rate. Okay, same thing is true when we talk about sliding down frictionless ramps. If there's friction, well, then it changes stuff. Okay, but if there's no friction, it won't affect it. Okay, in the y direction, so you can see what's happening in the y, the y direction or the, let's call it perpendicular direction, net force in the perpendicular direction, that's going to be equal to Fn minus mg cosine theta. Is that equal to ma? What's the acceleration in the perpendicular direction? Is that box coming off the ramp or sinking into it? Zero. It's got to be zero. It's got to be balanced because it's not sinking into the ramp. It's not flying off of it. It's just sliding across it. So what that means is your normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. If I ever ask you, hey, what's the normal force acting on this box on an incline? Shortcut, mg cosine theta. It's got to be. Okay. Now, if there is friction, let's say there's static friction and it keeps it from moving. So if there's static friction, our net force is going to be mg sine theta minus force of friction equals what does static friction mean? The object is at rest. at rest. So this has got to be equal to zero or mg sine theta equals the force of friction. Static. That should be FFS. When they're balanced, they're equal. If we do the same thing, but we now say, hey, they are in kinetic friction. We got kinetic friction. That means it's moving. It depends on the scenario, okay? Kinetic friction could be smaller than mg, or it could be bigger than mg. That just affects, is it speeding up or is it slowing down, okay? When we do this, we would just take mg sine theta minus ffk equals m times a. This equation, you're gonna use a couple times today. But you can solve it for different things. You can solve it for A by dividing by M. You can solve it for M if you factor the M's out. You can solve it for FFK. You could solve it for theta, but I won't have you do that. Any variable in here you could technically solve for. Now, if I divide by M, do the M's cancel? No. FFK doesn't have an M, so it wouldn't cancel. It's the number one mistake I tend to see. Okay. So let's actually go ahead and do some example problems so we can see how this stuff is used. Okay. 25 kilogram kid decides that he wants to roll down the hill at Herman Park. The hill has an incline of 40 degrees and because of the rough ground provides 112 newtons of frictional force. What is the acceleration of the kid? We've got our free body diagram. What does it look like? Like an incline. We've got an incline. The way I like to draw these, okay, when you're starting problems from scratch so you can see it, will it focus? No. Are we using 10 for gravity? We are still using 10 for gravity. Unless we do a lab, we'll always do 10 for gravity. So make my dot. I'm going to make a dashed line to show you where the incline is. We know gravity pulls straight down. Normal goes up this way. Friction, kinetic goes this way. Okay. This is the technical right answer for what the free body diagram looks like. Now to make it actually useful for us, we're going to draw the same thing almost. 
But we're going to go ahead and split gravity up into its pieces so we can see. We're going to keep Fn goes up. We're going to keep friction going this way, Ffk. But now instead, I'm going to have this arrow going here is mg sine theta. And this arrow going here is mg cosine theta. Okay. From here. You're always going to write your net force equation in the perpendicular direction, which is down the ramp. We're always going to make positive the direction this thing is moving. So if it's moving down the ramp, that means down the ramp is positive. <coughs> Our equation is mg sine theta minus everything that goes the opposite direction, which is FFK, equals m times a. Plug your numbers in. Solve for a. Any time you solve for acceleration, you need sine theta, mg sine theta. Do we cancel out the ears? Uh, okay, so if I divide by m here, is there an m over this? Yes. Is there an m over FFK? No, so we can't cancel. So we canceled it out there, but you got to plug the numbers, plug that whole thing in there. Um, if we're de dealing with inclines and sine for acceleration, yes, we'll always use sine. Okay. Because sine is the portion that pulls it down the ramp. And the reason we know that and can remember it is as si sine gets bigger, acceleration gets bigger. So as the angle gets bigger, it should go faster down. If you did cosine, that would make sense because bigger angle means less on cosine, and that doesn't match up with what we know happens. We know steeper hills, steeper inclines. Stuff's going to go down faster. Okay. Y'all should get 1.95 meters per second squared. I want you to do two and three, but since I'm recording, I'm going to skip to the graph questions. If you guys would skip to number seven. Okay. This is review of what we did in the lab and what we did the day or two before the lab going over graphing. The problem is our printers suck. So I realize it didn't print the best. Um, if you look at this point right here, use this for your slope. It is at eight and 400. So on both types of graphs, we care about slope. This one is asking, what is the mass of the object given the graph below? Okay. Here's what we got to keep in mind. I hope you can remember. You got to remember this for the test. I'm sure it's been the weekend in the lab and everything else, so we kind of forgot this. If I take the slope of this, that's rise over run, correct? That's going to give me a over f. It wants me to get mass. So if I say f net equals m times a, what is m equal to? What do I do with this a? Divide. Divide it. m is equal to f over a. So I need f over a. I am given with the slope a over f. What do I need to do with that? I got to switch it. So if you solve for rise over run, now we need to do run over rise, which sounds kind of dumb. Instead of doing 8 over 400, if you do 400 over 8, it will give you the mass. Okay? Because this is flip. What we want to have is flipped of what we're given here. Okay? You can solve for this number. You can do 8 over 400 and then do 1 over that. You can do 1 over the slope. Or you just be like, oh, well, I'll just flip these two. I'll do 400 over 8. You could do that. Either way, that will get you mass on this type of graph. Questions there? So you can either do 1 over the slope, or you could do run over rise. Either way, that will get you the mass. If you don't do that, you do the opposite thing. You're going to get it wrong on here, and you're going to get it wrong on the test. I think there's 10 points of graphing questions on the, on the test. Okay, So that's the difference from an A and a B. Got to know how to do this. On eight, pushing the object below. Uh, we're going to use this point here, which is one and two. 
it's got acceleration and one over the masses on the bottom. And it wants us to solve for force. We know that force is equal to m times a. If I do a divided by 1 over mass, keep it, change it, flip it, that's the same as a times m over 1, or a times m. How does a times m compare to m times a? It's the same. So you do use the slope here. We want slope. We don't have to inverse it or anything else. Slope is equal to force on this kind of graph. So just find the slope. You've got 1 and you've got 2. 1 over 2 is 1 half. That's your slope. That's the force. Okay? Questions? Now, back here, it didn't print the yellow real well. Okay? I'm going to pull it up on the screen so you can see it. We've got here the incline. Okay, these are the two graphs here. All you really have to do is ask yourself if it's asking for force. We know force on this type of graph is just slope. So which one's got the biggest slope? That one will have the biggest force. On this one, it's 1 over slope equals the mass. So instead of the biggest slope having the biggest mass, the smallest, lowest, flattest, yeah, flattest slope will have the largest mass. That's what you need to understand. Okay, on the test, yeah. I give you a multiple choice question where I say, hey, which of these has the greatest mass or which, which of these has the greatest force? And your choices are four different graphs. You have to look at it and do the math and know, okay, I'm using the slope or I'm using the inverse of the slope. That's what you got to know for the test. I can't see the yellow one at all. How do I don't circle it? Uh, just write yellow. If you think it's yellow, just write yellow. I know the printers are terrible. That's on camera because that's a fact.